There once was a young man, happily gifted as an Alcibiades. He went astray in the world, and in his distress looked about him for a Socrates, but he could not find one among his contemporaries. Then he asked the gods to transform him into a Socrates. And behold, the young man who had been so proud of being an Alcibiades was so shamed and humbled by the grace the gods had bestowed upon him that when he had received a gift of which he might well be proud, he felt himself the humblest of all. The point of view which I have to represent and expound is so absolutely unique that in the 1800 years of the history of Christendom, there is quite literally nothing analogous or corresponding to which I might link myself. In this sense also, over against the 1800 years, I stand alone. O oh, noble, simple sage of antiquity, the only human being whom I admiringly acknowledge as a thinker. There is but little which tradition has handed down concerning you, true and only martyr of the intellect, equally great as character and as thinker. But that little, how infinitely much, how have I not longed, living in the midst of these battalions of thinkers that Christendom brings out into the field as Christian thinkers, parenthesis, for otherwise, in the course of the centuries, there have lived in Christendom a few individual thinkers of significance, in parentheses. How have I not longed for one short hour of converse with you? Christendom has been sunk into a veritable abyss of sophistry, far worse than that which prevailed when the sophists flourished in Greece. These legions of preachers and Christian docents are all sophists, earning their livelihood. Here is the ancient mark of the sophist. By filling with delusions the minds of those who understand in nothing, and then making this mass this number, this human majority, the test and standard of Christianity and truth. But I do not call myself a Christian. That this is very embarrassing to the sophists, I understand very well. And I understand, too, that they would much prefer that I should loudly proclaim myself the only true Christian. And I know very well that the attempt has been made, untruthfully, to represent my agitation in this light, but I will not allow myself to be made a fool of. I do not call myself a Christian. O oh, Socrates, if you had only loudly proclaimed yourself the wisest man in Greece, the sophist would soon have been able to finish it off with you. No, no, you made yourself ignorant, but at the same time you had the malicious characteristic that you could expose the fact, precisely as being ignorant, that the others had still less knowledge than you they who did not even know that they were ignorant. 